This is Known Podcast, hosted by Dustin Bennett, the lead pastor of Known Victory Church in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. Known Podcast is dedicated to helping you grow closer to Jesus, unleashing the power of your creativity, and developing you as a leader. We hope you enjoy today's episode. Well, welcome back to the Known Podcast. So excited again that you're joining us today to learn more about leadership, to learn more about creativity, and hopefully we can all grow also in our relationship with Jesus. And I want to just say it's an honor to have you tune in and listen weekly to some of the things that God is doing in my life, some of the things that I'm learning, and I hope and pray um, that they're helping you grow as well, grow as a leader, uh, grow in your role, whatever capacity that you are. And so just excited um, that you're joining us today. And, and I don't know if you've ever heard someone say, at least their intention was good, right? Maybe they didn't act on something, but at least their intentions were good. Or, well, at least they have a good heart, or at least they tried, at least they're, they, they're making a difference. You know, at least their intention was good. And I think for all of us as people, we get lost in our intention, and we think that intention is good enough. You know, intending to show up on time and actually showing up on time are two completely different things. Intending to be generous and actually giving and being generous are two different things, right? Intending to eat healthy, intending to get exercise is very different than actually eating healthy, than actually going out and getting exercise. There's a difference between intention and action. You know, intention is only good when we actually have follow through. Intention is only good when we actually have action that follows the intention. The follow through or the action is oftentimes the hard part, right? Actually following through with the things that we intend to do is the hard part. You know, it's easy to intend, right? It's easy to to intend to call or text a friend that you haven't seen in a while. But it's very different and harder sometimes for us to actually make that phone call. For us to actually send that message. Intention and follow through are two completely different things. And and I want to go through this thought um, that we need to realize that everything that lasts requires discipline. Everything that lasts, if we want to have good intention but we also want to have good action, that is going to require discipline. If we want to be people that are not just people of good intention or that have a good heart or that are, you know, make, making a little bit of a difference, if we want to actually become people of action, discipline is actually what we need to learn. We need to learn how to become more disciplined in our life. If you want to build something powerful here on earth, it will require discipline. Saving money is hard, right? Why? Because it means we have to say no to things. We have to have daily discipline to not go to Tim Hortons or not go to McDonald's. That way we can save the money that we want to have for our future. Because it makes us give up something today so that we can have something later on in the future. Discipline is hard. If you want to buy a house, it might mean disciplining yourself to not buy your daily coffee. It might be disciplining yourself to not going to Starbucks two, three, four times a week. It might require discipline in order to put money into your savings account. If we want to build our business, it might require discipline for us to get up earlier. It might require us to put in more hours and require us to become more productive at work, right? What are the things that we need to become more disciplined in to actually see the results that we are looking for? And sometimes the sacrifice that we're making actually isn't building anything. Why? Because we don't actually have the foundation capable of holding it. Right? Why is it that sometimes sacrifice isn't, isn't making a difference? Because we don't have the character, we don't have the foundation to actually hold what we want our future to look like. And discipline is the space that we need to learn in order to actually become people of action so that, we, so that way our sacrifice actually has significance or sacrifice actually has importance in it. And discipline cultivates character. It allows us to grow so that the calling on our life matches the character that we have. Our character has to match our calling. Some of us, we've been praying for the blessing. We want the blessing. We want the results. But our character is not capable of actually holding the results. It's not capable of holding the victory. And discipline allows us to shift things to become the best version of ourselves for our workplaces, for our churches, for our families, for the world. That helps us become the best people that we 
can be. We need to learn how to do this. You know, we need to learn how to actually become disciplined in everyday life. And the gap between intention and action is discipline. The gap between, yes, I'm going, I want to do this. I want this to be a part of my routine. I want this to be a part of my life. The intention and action, the gap in between is discipline. How do we get from intention to action is by disciplining ourselves to not just be people who talk, not just be people who think, but actually be people who actually follow through and take action in the things that we want to do in our lives. That's what we need to become better at if we want to become people of action is discipline. And so today I have three things here that discipline does in our lives that has the capacity to shift things and allow us again to become the best version of ourselves. And so I have three. And number one of what discipline does for us, number one is discipline trains us. Discipline trains us. You know, we do not like to be disciplined by our parents. You know, when we were kids, well, I didn't want to like to be disciplined by my parents when I was a kid. And oftentimes, even in life, we don't want to be disciplined by God. We don't like to deal with the consequences of our actions. And God uses our hardships. God uses our pain oftentimes and our struggles to lead us away from some of the sin or the things in our life that into deeper connection with him. Discipline, dealing with consequence for some of our actions, leads us to make changes. Right? Discipline allows us to realize some of the unhealth in us and make changes to become healthier, to become the best and better versions of ourselves. And, in, you know, those of us who are parents, you know, disciplining our children sometimes comes easy, right? Because it's like, you know, I know what's best for you. I know that if you eat all your Halloween candy right now, that's probably not going to be best for you. If you just eat chocolate for dinner, that's not going to be best for you. And so we discipline them by saying, hey, we're going to actually create healthy meals for you. We're going to create healthy structure, healthy routines for you, but how many of us know disciplining ourselves, holding ourselves accountable to the things that we know is best for us is oftentimes the hardest, right? Disciplining ourselves is oftentimes the hardest because there's no one else holding you accountable to the things that you set out to do. There's no consequences to your actions, right? Because you can do what you want, whether it's good or bad, whether you're making the right choice or the wrong choice, and there's not a lot of uh, accountability for us as people. And the question is, do you have people in your life to actually hold you accountable to the training of discipline, right? Discipline trains us. And so we need to have people in our life that actually help us hold us accountable to the things that we set out to do because discipline leads us to a healthier, more productive and beautiful life. The life that I believe God has created each and every one of us to live. Discipline is the key to that. And there's, if there's one thing that I hate, in this world is running without purpose. Oh, I'm telling you, running without purpose seems so pointless to me. You know, I like sports, right? So I'll run when I play basketball. I'll run when I play football. I'll run when I play soccer. But for me to just get up and go for a run or to go on a treadmill, that, that seems horrible. Like there's nothing I hate more than running without a purpose. I do not like running. And the question, why? Why do I not like running? Because it's hard. Because I don't enjoy it, because it's it's painful, because it's boring. Like, I don't enjoy going for a run. And I did some research, because I like to research, and I learned, what would it take for me? You know, I'm never, not a runner. How, what would it take for me to actually train to be to run a marathon, right? 42, just over 42 kilometers. How? What would I need to do in order to make this happen in my life, right? What training, what discipline would I need to create in order for this to happen? And it's interesting because they say if you run a marathon, marathon for the first time, most likely your marathon time is going to be anywhere from five to six hours. Five to six hours of constant movement, of constant running five hours. I can barely watch a show for five hours. I can, I can barely sit still for five hours, let alone run for five to six hours. And not only will it take five to six hours, it's going to take 15 to 20 weeks of preparation, 15 to 20 weeks of discipline, 15 to 20 weeks of getting my body and my mind ready to run just over 42 kilometers for a marathon. That seems horrible. 
Yet so many people dedicate their lives or they've disciplined themselves so much that they can do this. You know, the, the world record time for a marathon is just over two hours. They're saying that that's the record. For me, it's going to take maybe four hours longer than the record. It takes discipline. It takes training in order to actually set out and accomplish some of the things in our lives. Discipline trains you and it trains your mind to make wiser choices to make healthier choices, to actually know the things that are the most important for you to actually say yes to. Each, every action that we take today, every choice that we make today has future consequences. Everything that we do right now has consequences in the future, whether it's good or whether it's bad, right? There's consequences to our choices today. The choices that we make today have the capacity to change things in our future. That has the capacity to change so many things in our life. What you do today matters. And how are you training yourself today? How are you disciplining yourself today? Will actually create the future that you want. It trains you to make better choices, to make wiser choices. Just like training to run a marathon, it's going to take time to discipline yourself to eat healthier, to discipline yourself to not just be a person of intention, but to actually follow through. Discipline is that gap. And we need to learn how that discipline trains us to be the best version of ourselves. It trains us to move forward. It trains us. It, 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 it empowers us. It guides us in the future. It helps us when it comes to taking care of ourselves holistically, right? Our minds, our spirit, our, our, our physical health, our mental health. It, it helps us holistically take care of ourselves because it's training us the things that are the most important. You know, and discipline is so important for us when it comes to training. What is discipline training you today? What are you training for, right? You have to realize what is it that, that you're training for in your life? What is it that you want out of your life? What is it that you want significance in? What is it that you want yourself to be? And we need to learn that, that if we want to get there, we need to train ourselves. We need to discipline ourselves to actually get there because it's not going to happen by accident. Right? You're not, it's not going to happen by accident that all, of a sudden, that all of a sudden you're reading so much more, that you're running a marathon. It doesn't just happen overnight. It takes time and effort and energy because discipline will train you to become the best version of yourself. And not only does discipline train you, but I believe that discipline inspires you, right? Discipline inspires us. That's our number second thought today is, is, is discipline inspires us. And most of the most influential people in my life, maybe I've met them and maybe I haven't, but the most, most influential, important people in my life, one of the greatest traits that they have is that they're disciplined. They, they are disciplined with their time. They're disciplined with their money. They're disciplined with their resource. They're disciplined with how they take care of themselves. They're disciplined in what they eat. They're disciplined with their exercise. Some of the most important uh, people, influential people in my life are some of the most disciplined people that I have ever seen. And we look around and we see incredible at leaders, right? We see incredible athletes. And one of the biggest things we see, again, is their discipline. Discipline is what makes you get to where you want to go. Discipline is what it takes. And discipline is more important than talent. Right. Discipline is so much more important than our talent. You will go farther if you can discipline yourself. You can go deeper. You can actually accomplish more with discipline rather than talent. Discipline tra trains us. To, to, it grows our talent. It grows our capacity. It grows our abilities because we're spending time investing and, in, and using other people and ourselves to inspire discipline in one another. When I look at some of these celebrities, some of these athletes, some of these people that I look up to, I look at them and say, man, their routines or the things that they're doing, it's not just about their talent. It's that they're investing their time, their energy and resources into themselves to grow their talent. You know, Kobe Bryant, if you know Kobe Bryant, played in the NBA for a long time. And he, he'll go down as one of the greatest basketball players of all time, right? There's a list, you know, we're talking about the GOAT, right? You know, the greatest of all time. Kobe Bryant will go down as one of the greatest basketball players of all time. He won multiple championships with the Los Angeles Lakers. You know, he played a long career. He, 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 he's got the statistics, right? He, he was incredible. You know, and it's interesting is that Kobe Bryant, was drafted right out of high school and played in his first NBA game at the age of 18 years and 72 days old, right? 18 years old. 
He was a young kid playing in the NBA. He was exceptionally talented. But what maybe made Kobe Bryant great was not his talent, but actually his work ethic. What made Kobe Bryant most most successful to be one of the greatest basketball players of time was less about his talent. Yes, he was talented, but it was his work ethic. It was his discipline. You know, there's a story that came out of the, the, the Olympics in 2004. You know, Kobe Bryant was playing in the Olympics just days after he lost in the NBA Finals. Just days after he lost. And he was tired, right? he just just had a long season. He was exhausted. He was emotionally drained because they had just lost in the championship. He was sore, right? He, 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 he had gone through a lot. But when, but when players tried at the Olympics, right, the, at the Olympics, when they tried to beat him to breakfast at the crack of dawn, right, the early time in the morning, they would come down for breakfast early in the morning, and Kobe Bryant would be all sweaty and have ice packs on his knees, right? He, 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 had, he, had, he had already been at the gym for hours that morning. Before these guys, they say, I'm going to beat Kobe Bryant to breakfast. They beat him. They didn't even beat him to breakfast. He had already trained hours in the gym, shooting shots and making himself better before these guys even got out of bed. He became great, not just because of his talent, but because of his self-discipline. Because talent will only get you so far. If you try to build a legacy, if you try and build a life just on your talent, you will fail. Because your talent cannot sustain you. We need to look at the people who inspire us most and learn to grow our talent. Discipline develops talent. If you want to become more talented, if you want to grow your capacity, if you want to grow your ability, yes, you're talented. Yes, you're gifted. But don't waste the talent. Grow the talent. Grow your capacity. Grow your discipline so that way you can actually go farther and have a longer legacy that will surpass so many things. Discipline develops talent. You're gifted. You are talented. But your talent will only take you so far unless you develop it, unless you're disciplined to grow your talent. Because other people will surpass you. People who are less talented, less gifted will surpass you if they're disciplined enough to get make themselves better. There's another story. This guy named Jamarcus Russell played in the NFL. And, 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 and I'm just going to read this. Is that Jamarcus Russell wowed the Raiders, one of the NFL teams, with his arm strength and incredible pre-draft workout. He was talented. So much so that they drafted quarterback Jamarcus Russell first overall in the 2007 NFL draft. First overall. But what's interesting is this guy was talented, but his discipline was not there. And so much so that, that his coaches didn't think that Jamarcus Russell was studying tapes, so they gave him blank tapes. They said, hey, watch these tapes, look at the blitz packages, you know, look look at the defensive coverages that are going to happen, and we're going to watch these tapes, and we're going to talk about them the next day. And so he came in the next day. He said, yeah, I watched these tapes. I watched the blitz packages, but the tapes were blank. He, he, he didn't even have the time. He didn't have the discipline or the work ethic to actually study film to make himself better, to actually become more competitive. And so what happened is it's, it's, it's sad, but he was extremely talented, but he only lasted in the NFL for three seasons. He didn't last very long because his discipline, his work ethic didn't make him better. His talent could only take him so far. Yes, he was, you know, first overall pick, but it only took him so far. We have to learn that we have to learn to have the discipline to develop our talent, to go farther, to go into the future. Because discipline inspires us to be better. It inspires us to grow. It allows us to create our own goals for our own aspirations and our own desires on this planet. What do you want to accomplish? And then set up goals, set up a way to track the progress that you're making. Goals are so important to making sure that we're disciplined because we know what we want to see. We know how we're going to see it happen and we go and do it. Goals help us become disciplined. They help us stay on track. They help us stay within the guidelines of what we're trying to accomplish this week, this month, this year. That's what goals do in your life. Goals are so important. And the question that I think a lot of us have is how do you set a goal, right? You know, you, maybe you know the outcome you want to see, but how do you set a goal, you know, to actually make it to where you want to go? And one of the best ways to do this, to set goals in your life in a way that maybe you've heard of before, maybe you've used before, is a tool called SMART Goals. Now, SMART goals is the, the ability to, to actually set goals in your life that are SMART. And so SMART is, is an acronym for, for things, right? So S stands for specific. 
right? M stands for measurable. A stands for achievable. Uh, R stands for relevant. And T stands for time-based. And so when we're setting goals, we can set these goals that are smart goals. And so if you your goal number one is S, which is specific. So this says be as clear as po- and specific as possible with what you want to achieve. The more narrow your goal is, the more you'll understand the steps necessary to achieve it, right? So be specific with what exactly it is you want to see. Number two, M, measurable. What evidence will prove that you're making progress towards your goal? What, how can you measure the success? How can you measure the progress that you're making? And then three, achievable, A, achievable. What, uh, setting goals you can reasonably accomplish within a certain time frame that will help you, that will help keep you motivated and focused. Sometimes we set these goals that are so unrealistic, so unachievable that we're like, man, like we get two days in, we're like, man, this isn't even possible. No, it's not possible. So set up a goal that you know you can actually accomplish, you know, set up a goal that yes, stretches you, but it's something that you know you are capable of growing into. And then, uh, number, uh, this one is R, so relevant when setting goals for yourself, consider whether they are relevant. Each of your goals should align with your values and larger long-term goals. If a goal doesn't contribute to t- towards your broader objectives, you might want to rethink it. So what are the things that you want to accomplish? Big things. What are the small steps that are relevant to actually getting to that end goal? You know, what is it that's relevant for you when you're setting your goals? And then the last one is T for time-based. What is your goal time frame? At the end date can help... Uh, Having an end date can help provide motivation and help you prioritize. So we need to learn that, okay, th- I want to have this goal done by the end of June or I want to have this goal done by the end of 2023. I want to have this goal done. This is when I, my timeline, when my deadline is for this. Set a deadline for the goal that you have. Set, set up goals for yourself uh, physically. Set up goals for yourself physically, mentally, and spiritually. Where do you want to be in one year when it comes to your physical health? Where do you want to be in two years when it comes to your mental health? Where do you want to be in three years when it comes to your spiritual health and set up goals that will help you get to that goal, to get to that deadline, to get to that place that you want to go. And when we're setting up goals, where do you feel God is leading you? Where do you feel like God is leading you? What, What is God inspiring you to do and set up goals and create a pathway to get there? Right. God is saying, hey, this is maybe the end goal or this is the steps, you know, set up a pathway, set up guidelines to help you achieve that, to help you understand where you are going. We need to discipline ourselves today to have the character to have to handle the fu- the fruit of the future. I'm going to say that again. We need to discipline ourselves today to have the character to handle the fruit of the future. Right to create the platform, to create the baseline, to create a space where we know that our character is matching where we want to go. If you want to live a long time and do good work, if you want to accomplish a lot, you have to prepare for it today. You have to make set your mind today to get to where you want to go. If you want to be a person with long uh, long lasting legacy and long lasting influence. We need to not not only be inspired by discipline, but inspire others with our discipline. Inspire other people with the things that you're doing. Inspire other people with the things you've accomplished through setting goals and creating discipline in your own life to be healthier, to be better, to go farther, to go longer. That's what goals have the capacity to do in our lives. Inspire people to be healthier. Inspire people to make better choices. Inspire people to think about their future first. To inspire people to go forward and not quit. Inspiration can go a long way when it comes to discipline. So number one, discipline trains us. Number two, discipline inspires us. And lastly, discipline defends us. We wonder how to become more self-disciplined. How do we become more self-controlled? To be better at taking care of our bodies you know, eating properly or drinking enough water or getting daily exercise. We need to learn that our greatest defense against distraction, our greatest defense against doubt, our greatest defense against temptation besides prayer is self-control. Learning how to say no. Learning how to say no to the things that are not leading you into something beautiful. Saying no to the wrong things and learning to say yes to the right things. You know, that's how I define discipline. 
Now, discipline is teaching yourself to say no to the wrong things and learning to say yes to the right things. That's what I view discipline as. I can learn how to say no to that so that I can say yes to this. I can learn how to say yes to this so I can learn how to say no to this. What are you saying yes to and what are you saying no to? What we say yes to should lead us to be healthy. What we're saying yes to should help other people become healthy. What are you saying yes to? In your life, and that's what defends us is we know, okay, no, this isn't going to be good for me. You know, this decision or this this opportunity is not actually going to lead me to where my goals are, to lead me into the future that I want. So I have to say no to this to actually create space to say yes to the right things. It, you know, when we learn how to do this, it defends us from the things that try and steal our discipline. It defends us from the things that try and steal our focus. When we know our why, when we know why we do things and the things we need to do, it allows us to say no to the things that we want to do. There's a lot of things that we want to do. And not, you know, doing some of the things you want to do sometimes isn't wrong. But if we're saying yes to the things that we want to do rather than the things we need to do all the time, we're never going to make it anywhere that we actually want to go. You know, and the right things and the wrong things are different for everyone. You have to determine for you what are the right things for you. What are the things you have to say yes to? What are the things that you have to say no to? It's determined by what you want to achieve. It's determined by the, 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 the outcome that you want. It's determined by the goals that you have. That's when we know what to say yes to and what to say no to. Figure out the things that you value, right? What is it that you value in your life? The, thing, the things that you want out of your life. What do you want to achieve in your life? And then schedule those things into your week. It might mean saying yes to going for a walk after dinner, which means you have to say no to playing video games. It might mean you have to, you know, say yes to salad because you have to say no to pizza, right? What do you have to say yes to and what do you have to say no to in your life? It might mean saying no to soccer practice on Sunday morning so that you can say yes to church on Sunday morning. What do you want out of your life? What do you want to achieve and learn to say yes to the things that will lead you forward and say no to the things that will hold you back? What's holding us back oftentimes is the things that we're giving our time to, giving our money to, giving our resources to that are not leading us anywhere that we actually want to go, not leading us to our long-term goals, not leading us to be healthier. We need to learn how to say no because temptation is going to come in our lives. And oftentimes we feel so defenseless, right? We feel like I can't say no to temptation. I can't say no to sugar. I can't say no to playing video games. I can't say no to this meeting. I can't say no to this. And we feel so powerless or so defenseless. But discipline leads to courage. It leads us to become courageous and say no. It allows us to actually become fighters because we've def- def- defended ourselves against temptation. Because there's going to be temptation that comes to get you distracted. There's going to be temptations that that come to not follow through in what we said we would do, right? The intention. There's going to be things that tempt to say, no, you know, I'm not going to call them today. I'm busy. Or I'm not going to pick up my kid from school because I'm busy. I'm not going to do this. My intentions are there. But I'm not actually having the follow through. I'm not actually taking action steps to get to where I know I want to go. We need to learn to not just be people of intention, but of people of action. And discipline is what gets us there. What are you disciplining yourself in today that'll inspire you, that'll train you, and that will defend you? We become defended when we, def- the full of defense, when we realize, again, I can say no to this because I know that's not going to lead me to where I want to go. I can say no to this because, no, this is my priority. My family, you know, time with my family is my priority. So I'm going to say no to this. We create discipline, and it defends us from the temptation. It defends us from the distractions. It puts us in a place of focus on the right things rather than focusing on the wrong things. Disciplining ourselves to be healthy holistically is actually defending ourselves and teaching ourselves to have self-control. If we don't have self-control, we will be defenseless. If we don't have self-control, you will be defenseless. Why? Because when something shiny comes in your eyes, when something you want is right in front of you, and we don't have self-control to say no, it will destroy us. It will destroy you. Discipline keeps us safe. Discipline helps us make better choices. We predetermine the yes. Why? 
Because then when something comes in that we're tempted by, when something comes in that's like, I want that so badly, but it doesn't lead us to where we want to go, we can say, no, this is not right for today. I need to make this choice in in order to create the future that I want to have. Discipline leads us to action, leads us to making things happen and actually doing something. We have to learn that discipline, as hard as it is, trains us to think about the future first. It inspires us to do bigger and go farther and to do better and to be better. And it defends us from the things that don't lead us to a better future. It defends us, it protects us, it keeps us safe. And I believe we can all learn to become more disciplined. It might start small. And maybe on this paycheck, you know, I get paid. I'm like, I'm not going to eat it, eat out. I'm not going to order food in for this whole paycheck. I will determine how much I would have spent on going out. I w- I'm going to determine how much I would have spent ordering food in. And I'm going to save it rather than spend it. That might be a small step of discipline for you that you can do right now. I might be scheduling a, a, a walk every day after dinner to get, in, to get in a bit of exercise daily. And it might be saying no to video games one night. It might mean saying no to video games. It might be mean saying no to a meeting in order to be healthy. It might mean that one night a week you, you, you turn off all your electronics so that way you can say yes to spending time in God's presence, spending time in prayer, and spending time in Scripture. It might mean saying no to something in order to have the best or the things that are going to create the healthiest practices and the healthiest routines in our lives. It might mean taking a week to have no sugar. Maybe cut it out for a week, seven days, no sugar. Low sugar content. Putting away the Halloween candy and saying, no, I'm not eating sugar this week. It might mean saying no to coffee. It might mean saying no to carbs. It might mean saying yes to going to the gym two, three times a week. Do something today, a small step of discipline today that will lead you into something more beautiful. You know, discipline is like moving a massive ship, right? I don't know if you've ever been on a cruise or a massive boat. Those things take a while to get going, right? It's like starts so small, it takes time. They weigh so much weight, it's hard to get them going. It's the same with discipline. It's hard to get started, but when the ship starts moving, there's nothing that can take it down. It's just going to go through and over anything in its way because it's just going. The momentum has started. It's just the same with discipline. We build momentum and we will crush any obstacle in our way. We build momentum and we start small, right? It might mean, you know, doing something so small one day and then it's like, well, you know, I'm starting to see this pattern of success. I'm starting to see this pattern of overcoming. I'm starting to see this pattern where I'm making healthier and wiser choices in my life. We see these patterns in our life start small but the momentum builds and all of a sudden we're where we want to be we're starting to see ourselves actually in the places we've dreamed of the places where we where we're healthy the places where where our family's healthy where our business is healthy where the culture is healthy because we've disciplined ourselves we've been trained by discipline we've been inspired by discipline and we've been defended by discipline You know, it might start small, but the momentum builds, and you're going to start to crush everything that you set out to do. You're going to start to accomplish things that you never even thought were possible because you've disciplined yourself to say yes to the right things and no to the wrong things. Discipline is key to a long-lasting life and a long-lasting legacy. Discipline helps us achieve our lifelong ambitions. We can all get better at discipline. We can all get better at saying yes to the right things and no to the wrong things. We can learn to be disciplined. And I believe that you can do this, and I believe that we can all do this together. Thank you for joining us today for The Known Podcast. We have new content coming out every Wednesday, so make sure to come back next week for a new episode. If you haven't yet, make sure to follow us on Instagram at Known Podcast and follow us on your favorite podcast platform. See you next week.